Okay. I'm doing my presentation on Albert Einstein. I thought he was a really neat guy. So when he was born, um, he was really slow and dull, and everybody's like, oh, he's never going to come to anything in life. He, he didn't learn to talk to he's like the age of three or four. But when he did, he asked so many people questions that people wish he hadn't started talking. Um, in fact, later on, he gets kicked out of school for asking so many questions. <laughs> um, he, attended, he attended the Leupold Gymnasium. It was a Catholic school, even though his family, um, they were all Jews. Um, so he was really messed up um, in religion-wise because he wasn't sure who to believe, the Jews or the Catholics. So he wasn't a full Jew, but he wasn't a Catholic. So anyway, at the age of 15, his dad lost his job and they had to move, um, they moved to Italy. And, but he had one year left at the gymnasium and then he would be able to get his degree and be able to go to the college that he wanted to. Um, so he stayed and six months, he was sick of it. The people he stayed with, their kids were really rambunctious and he couldn't handle it. The kids were always bugging him and he didn't have anybody to ask questions. And the kids, like, he would be studying and they'd peek in and see him studying so he'd run over and he'd have to tell them stories. And he was really cute with them and the mother loved him. But um, it was just too hard on him. So six months, he decides to write home and tell his mom that he's sick. Because in a way, he is sick. He's homesick. He wants to go home. So he's all happy. He goes off to school. He's like, hey, I'm going to write a letter when I get back from school and go home. Well, that day after school, his teacher pulled him aside and she said, for the last time you've made me look dumb in class, I'm expelling you. None of the students respect me anymore because of the questions you ask because I can't answer them. Um, and so he was more than overjoyed. He's like, yes, he went home, he packed, and he caught the first train to Italy. Um, Okay, once he was in Italy, he, um, he renounced his citizenship to Germany. So he was no longer a German um, because he didn't want to go to war. He hated war. Like, he thought everything about it was awful. He think, um, so, let's see. Um, and then from Italy, he went to Switzerland to finish high school. Okay, so, awful story. After he gets kicked out of school, he only had six months left. But since they kicked him out, he couldn't go to the high, the, um, the college he wanted to. So he goes to college and he's like, okay, I got kicked out of school because I asked many questions. Can I come join your school? And he said, okay, you're going to take this test and if you can pass the test, you can come to our school. And um, so he took the test and he did amazing in the math and science. But in everything else, he was awful. And they said, no, you have to go back to high school and get your degree or get your diploma before you can come here. And so he had to go back um, to the gymnasium and do another six months. And he was really sad about that. But anyway, so he was able to go to the school they wanted to. It was called the Swiss Federal Institution of Technology. Um, he graduated with a teaching degree, but he couldn't find work. Um, finally, he worked at, um, at a post office. And he worked there for seven years, which turned out to be the most productive time in his life because that's when um, that's when he wrote the most intelligent papers because he had so much extra time. Um, in 1898, he was around the age of 19, he met a girl named Maleva. Maleva? I don't know. Anyway, she was an old classmate. They fell in love and in 1902 they had a daughter named Lizerl. Um, um, and then they were married in 1903. So, but when they were married, they gave the little girl up for adoption because she was born out of wedlock. So they didn't keep her. And she is the cutest little girl. I'll pass around a paper of pictures. Um, she's the middle one. But she is so cute. I can't, um, I don't know why they did that. That's so dumb. But anyway, so they, they put their daughter up for adoption and then they had two more sons later on. Um, Maleva was a mathematician. Um, Albert referred to her as a creature who is my equal and who is as strong and independent as I am. Um, well, okay, so Albert was working in Berlin and war broke out. And so Maleva and her two sons, they moved back to Switzerland. And um, their relationship just grew more and more apart. And after the war, they just never got back together. Um, but they weren't officially divorced until um, in 1919. And four months later, Albert married his cousin, Elsa. Um, yeah, they didn't have any kids, but 
Elsa was Albert's first cousin maternally and his second cousin paternally. She was three years older than Albert. So I thought that was gross. She's his cousin and she's three years older than him. Um, let's see. So, but lots of scientists think that if it weren't for Maleva, he wouldn't have written all the amazing papers that he written. It wouldn't have helped him discover. Maleva was really one who helped him along the path. And often he would write our papers or how happy and proud we are and stuff like that. So he really referred to her a lot. And he, they really loved each other. I'm, it's, I don't know why they divorced. Um, Albert um, was a very hard worker. The problem that bothered him was the, the most was gravity. Um, to account for gravity, time and space must be curved around massive objects. The math, the math was very complex, and the whole idea is so strange that most people didn't accept it. But, all, but Einstein suggested three ways it could be proven. One was to make observations on starlight during solar eclipse. Conveniently, a, a solar eclipse occurred in 1919, and astronomers made the ob observations that proved the general theory of relativity. Einstein became a celebrity. Much of the world had just caught its breath after a long and horrifying war, and perhaps in relief, latched onto this amazing human achievement. Um, Hitler was rising to power in Germany, and I Einstein had renewed his um, German citizenship, so he was now a German again. But he was considered suspect because he was a Jew. Um, and it, might, it may be that the Nazi party found that his relativity, his relativity theories conflicted with what they considered pure physics. Um, he was in California when Hitler took power, and he never returned to Germany. Um, he um, took a position at the Institute for Advanced Studies in Princeton, where he remained for the rest of his life. Um, he spent the later part of his years um, in the unifold field theory, one basic equation to explain all the forces of nature. He wrote on many topics, especially peace. But rising in the wars before World, II made him, World War II made him sign a 1939 letter to President Roosevelt warning him that Germans could create an atomic bomb. So what, how he made the bomb is he took um, an atom and he separated it in half. And trying to put the atoms back together again creates an explosion that can be seen like halfway across the world. So they, they well not halfway across the world, it's huge. So he made a bomb and they blew up half of Japan with it. And his bomb was what ended the war because if it weren't for his bomb, um, they wouldn't have won. Um, it was called the Manhattan Project, and but they didn't give him any credit because he was a Jew, and they persecuted him, and they said like they totally demoralized him because he was a Jew. So finally, he renounces German citizenship <laughs> for a second time, and he moved to the U.S. Um, to avoid persecution. Um, he was offered to be the president of Israel, but he declined because he wanted to teach at a college. So, but <laughs> they named a periodic table after him when he died. Einstein died on April 18th in Princeton, New Jersey. After a long illness, he died peacefully in his sleep. The listed cause of death was a ruptured artery in his heart. By request in his will, there was no funeral, no grave, and no marker. His brain was donated to the science, and his body was cremated, and his ashes were spread over by near river. Um... So that's Albert Einstein. And then I have a few quotes by him. Here, you can just take that off the phone. Um, he was really known for um, his quotes. One of his quotes were, Two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the universe. <laughs> Before God, we are all equally wise and equally foolish. Whoever undertakes to set himself up as a judge of truth and knowledge is shipwrecked by the laughter of the gods. Anyone who has never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Um, the important thing is not to stop questioning. Curiosity has its own real purpose for existing. And then, sorry on the bookmarks, I didn't realize purpose wasn't in there until after I printed them up. So. And then, this was my favorite quote. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. And that's my presentation. <laughs>
Why did they want it to be What? Why did they want it to be Because it was secret. Okay.